Hi, and welcome to another episode of Smoke and Mirrors. The topic of this tutorial was chosen by my patrons. What you're looking at right now is an experiment I did a little while ago to see how many asteroids I could get Godot to render at an acceptable frame rate. I managed to get this running in the hundreds of thousands of asteroids on my old laptop with a 1060 GTX graphics card. There are a number of different techniques involved in what you're looking at right now, and we're only going to look at one of those in today's video, and that is using Godot's multi-mesh node. The other noteworthy technique we'll look at at a later date is the LOD system shown by the different colors of the roids. The green ones have something ridiculous like 30,000 polygons. Multi-mesh in and by itself isn't a silver bullet. When used wrongly, it can cost performance instead of improve performance. We'll be looking at that in this video. To obtain a baseline, we're first going to add our asteroids as mesh instance nodes. We'll write a simple loop in GDScript that adds asteroids at a random location. Every time we hit the spacebar, we double the number of asteroids. I've already set up a project and created a main scene with a camera setup and lighting setup. We'll inherit this main scene to implement each version of this. Note the single mesh instance we have added to the scene for our first roid. I'm using a very low polygon mesh with a badly unwrapped normal map. So, all we need to do here is create a script on our main node. We start by defining a few variables with which we can tweak how many roids we'll be putting on screen and how far away they can be. Then we add a variable that tracks how many roids we're currently showing. Next, we add the function that will add new roids to our scene. First, we check if we've got our maximum number of roids, and if so, we return. Then we check how many roids we want by doubling our current roids and clamping it between our minimum and maximum number. Now we can loop to add the roids we need. First, we create a new mesh instance. Then we copy the mesh from our initial mesh instance. Now we start with a new transform that we use to position our roid. Because our mesh is way too big, we start by applying a scale. Next, we randomize the location of our roid and assign that to the transform's origin. Note that we subtract half our max distance to center the area in which we create our roids. Now we can add our mesh instance to our scene and assign its global transform. And update our current roid count. We call our add roids function for the first time in our ready function to create our initial set of roids. I'm adjusting the scale as the roids need to be a little bigger. Now we call a function on our UI node that will inform the user of how many roids we have. Finally, we implement our input function to catch our events. If the event is our UI accept event, our spacebar was pressed and we call our add roids function to add more roids. You can run this scene instead of our main scene by pressing the play scene button. When we run our little test, we can see the effect of increasing the number of asteroids we add. I'm starting at 16,000 roids and it's rendering at an acceptable frame rate. Doubling to 32,000, we can see we're starting to struggle. At 64,000, we're down to 30 FPS. Note also, as we keep increasing, it takes longer and longer to actually add the roids. There is a certain overhead in adding nodes to the scene tree in the way that we do. So, now that we have a baseline, let's convert our example to using a multi-mesh instead. We create a new instance scene for this. 
After we create our multi-mesh instance node, we need to add a multi-mesh object to this. It is on this object we configure what we want to render. For now, we're going to ignore the color format. We change our transform format to 3D and we leave our custom data format alone. Our instance count creates the array that will store all our location data. If we change it here, this array will be saved as part of our scene data, which can be very handy. But in our case, we leave it at zero and set it in code later on. We can set our visible count to the number of asteroids we're actually rendering. This allows us to pre-allocate a buffer for the maximum number of objects we want to show, but without actually showing them all. This allocation is costly, so we want to do this once. Again, we'll be changing this in code. Finally, we load in our asteroid mesh. Now we write the code that adds new asteroids. This code is almost identical to our previous implementation. We start with our setup variables. For convenience, we'll add a variable that gets set to our multi-mesh resource. We start with our add roids function. We check our visible roid count and exit if we have enough roids. Then we double the number of roids we want to have and clamp the results again. Now we loop through our new roids so that we can randomly set a location for them. We don't need to create anything here, but just update our multi-mesh buffer. Then we update our visible instance count and update our UI. In our ready function, we first assign our instance count to the maximum number of roids we'll render, allocating our buffer. We then call add roids to add our first set of roids. Finally, we add our input function, just like before. Running this test, we can see some interesting results. We are immediately seeing that adding roids takes much less of a performance hit, so there is a win for us. Our frame rate is up as well, but does start to go down when we get into the hundreds of thousands. Now, if we were to repeat this with a higher polygon object or a more complex shader, we would see less and less performance difference. In fact, there will be a point where the multi-mesh will be slower than individual mesh instances. We're winning by removing the overhead of individual draw calls for every asteroid, but we're losing the ability to do clipping on the individual asteroids. In our multi-mesh example, all the asteroids that are off-screen are still being rendered, while in our original example, those were being clipped. We've traded one performance issue for another. The way we solve this is by balancing the two. Instead of using a single multi-mesh node, we're going to create a grid of multi-meshes. Now, in my original example, these are organized in what is called an octree, but for this video, we're going to keep it simpler. We'll create a grid of 10 by 10 by 10. That means we end up with a thousand multi-meshes. To get a million roids, each will render a thousand of them. I'm creating a subscene with a multi-mesh and we start by copying the code we wrote into a script for this subscene. We can set our start roids to 1 and our max roids to 1000. We'll divide our max dist by 10. And we change our on ready var to use our multi mesh directly. Don't forget to change our extends here. Instead of updating our UI, we return our new roid count. We also remove our add roids call from our ready function and remove our input function. Now we create a new main scene. And we add a new script to this. Before we write code, we'll add a new spatial node that will become our container for our multi-meshes. In our ready function, we'll nest three loops that will create our nodes. 
we start with a variable that holds the position at which we create our node. Our first loop goes through our 10 layers on our Z axis. We then reset the position on our Y axis. Now we loop through our 10 layers on our Y axis and reset the position on our X axis. Our final loop goes through our 10 layers on our X axis. We need to preload our multi mesh scene, so let's do that at the top of our code first. Now we can instance a new scene in our loop and add it as a child to the grid node. We create a new transform to position our new node and assign that to its global transform. We increase each of our axes in our position variable at the end of each loop. Once all our nodes are added, we call our add roids function. We need to implement that, so let's do so. Here we loop through all the multi mesh nodes. We call add roids on each of them and add the resulting count together. Then we update our UI with our total roid count. Finally, we implement our input event here and call our add roids function when we press spacebar. Before we can run our demo, we quickly need to fix up two things. First, we need to return zero when our instance count has been reached. And we set our multi mesh resource to local to scene so we get a unique resource. Our frame rate has improved a fair amount. Once we start going over a million roids, it can start to struggle, as we look into our entire asteroid field from one edge, but I've increased the limit to 4 million and even at that we get anywhere between a dismal 10 to an acceptable 60 frames per second. 4 million roids. As you can see from how full our display is, that's far more than we need. Creating our grid of multi meshes does take a few seconds. The obvious solution here would be to create a scene that has these nodes in it already. In the same way, instead of random generating our locations, we could pre-populate our arrays and save it as part of our scene data. That would remove a bunch of overhead. There is so much room for improvement, yet in a few minutes we've created a viable solution. We'll look into some of those improvements in a later video. That's all we have time for today. If you found this video useful, please consider hitting that like button. Follow me on Twitter for more regular status updates and to see what I'm working on. Until next time.